wonderful, wonderful viewers. I'm sure that any of you who have watched my videos before have already realized that this is a slightly different format. I would generally like to sit down face to face so that you can see me, engage my expression when talking about a video like this, but unfortunately, due to just life being life, I am unable to set up my camera and recording equipment today, but I did have my microphone nearby, so hopefully this video will end up being what you hoped it would be. Back in, I believe, January, I discussed the fact that I would like to periodically do a showcase on magical creatures on this channel for my witchcraft segments, and originally I was hoping that each month I could focus on a certain creature and kind of deep dive into them. Unfortunately, <laughs> I just didn't really realize how short a month can be be while I was preparing for those videos. So rather than trying to be as ambitious as deciding to do at least one creature a month, I'm just doing them as I have time. And since we began with dragons, I decided it was only fair to continue with dragons. So in our last creature showcase, we discussed just the basics of working with dragons. And today I want to kind of beef it up by explaining the different types of dragons that exist that you can work with. Luckily for you, Dragon types are not that difficult to remember because it's the same thing that you already work with every day. They're just elemental beings. They're highly elevated elemental beings who many believe have even surpassed the gods and how powerful they are. Now when you hear elemental, you may be thinking, well, well, elements also correlate to the zodiac sign. Does that mean that my dragon guardian has to correlate with my zodiac symbol? And the answer to that is, of course not. If you are an air sign and you happen to bond with a water dragon, there's nothing wrong with that. Everything is in how you feel around that creature, how it elevates your practice and makes you better at your craft. So I'm going to be talking a little bit about each elemental dragon in more depth right now. We're going to begin with earth dragons. Now, as can be expected, in terms of colorings, we have very earthy tones. Think of the forest, browns, blacks, greens, um, var various shades of greeny blues and everything. Anything you see if you're walking in a forest, that's the colors that correspond to an earth dragon. Now, why is it important to know their colors? Honestly, for the most part, it's just easier for you to visualize them, and it's easier for you to offer them gifts in exchange for helping you. Now, dragons don't necessarily look the way you've seen them in fantasy movies and in paintings, but since they're older than pretty much time itself, very wise and very kind, they don't mind you seeing them the way you need to see them. And assigning colors to them kind of helps you visualize it. We are mostly visual creatures, apart from people with visual impairments, of course. And that means that sometimes it's just easier for us to understand something if we feel like we can see it. So, Say that you want to work with an earth dragon. You can use one of those colors for your candle that you light for it. You can go out and collect items of those colors and put them in your offering bowl. Anything like that is going to be nice. And an earth dragon is more of a distant, silent watcher. They don't get quite as involved in a very superficial sense as some of the other dragon guardians. Instead, they kind of sit back and allow you to learn on your own. They love you, they want to protect you, and they want to be there for you, and they are, but they're not the ones that you're going to be going and running to every single day to solve all of your problems. Rather than saying, Earth Dragon, Earth Dragon, I need your help. I don't know what to do about this issue or that issue. Instead of immediately helping you understand how to fix your problem, they'll kind of allow you to unravel your own decisions you have to make. 
they're very good though for long-term goals because they kind of do a slow burn with you and force you to discover things on your own. If you have something you're trying to work at for the next year or longer, I'd say they're the perfect dragon to work with. They're also a source of life, of course, being earth dragons. Earth is the mother. Earth is what gives all of us life. We can't live without earth. And therefore, if you like, you could see it as a more feminine dragon. They don't have gender in the way that humans do, of course, and they don't even necessarily have sex in the way that humans do. But being that it is a source of life, you could feel a feminine energy radiating from this dragon. And this could be something that could help with an ongoing issue like a fertility issue. If you want to find out something more specific about an earth dragon, go out into nature. I know it's a little difficult for some people depending on where you live, but I think that people overthink what it means to go out into nature. They don't expect you to drive three hours out of your way to find a big vast forest. Just find a park or an area a couple roads down with a few trees. You don't have to trespass or anything. Just be in the general vicinity of that nature. Feel it. Let your senses kind of take you away and learn about it by experiencing it. Some more specific and focused gifts that earth dragons happen to enjoy are anything real gold. Now again, you don't have to go out and spend a load on this dragon or anything. They don't want to put you into poverty. But if you happen to have like an old piece of jewelry you just don't really wear anymore that has real gold, go ahead and offer that to it. They also have candles, of course, because fire is something that is a part of them. So candles are always good. They enjoy wine. They enjoy agate and smoky quartz and patchouli would be a very good incense to use with them. And last but not least, the earth dragon is north, just the same as you would see on your pentacle. Next we have the air dragon, which is facing east. This one is yellow, light blue, white, gray, etc. Anything you would see in the sky. So think of any time of day, the beautiful colors you see in the sky, those are colors you can assign to an air dragon. And they are more for communication, creativity, and intellect. So they're very scholarly dragons. These are the ones that you would want to use in school, in college, in any um, new undertaking of creativity that you're going after if you're trying to get into painting or singing or something. They're a good one to work with because they'll be able to help you realize those specific goals. This dragon has abilities that are a little bit more focused than the earth dragon. So if you are someone who feels that the creative field is something you'd like to do the rest of your life, I'd say go with an air dragon. And as far as the intellect goes, this can be a pretty deep concept with an air dragon. As far as intellect, anything more cerebral they can help you with. If you are becoming a lawyer or something and you're having some trouble with a case, you can go ahead and talk with them about that. With communication, they're very good for relationships. If you are someone who struggles with communicating your feelings, maybe work with an air dragon and have them help you open those communication fields so that your partner feels a little bit more loved in that way. And your gifts for your air dragon are going to be moonstone, obviously the moon, something in the sky, selenite, again something that very much represents and looks like the sky and the air, sapphire to represent that gorgeous blue, and frankincense. And before I go on with the other dragons, I'm sure you've noticed that at first some of the crystals assigned to these dragons might make sense from a color standpoint, but other ones do not. When you're trying to gather crystals to work with a certain dragon type, don't focus too heavily on the colors. Yes, colors are wonderful for them, but you can always just go out and find other gifts of those colors. Instead, look into what your crystal meanings are. Figure out which ones correlate the most to that dragon type and worry more about that than the color. Now we have the fire dragon, which almost sounds like an oxymoron. <laughs> Very obviously, red, orange, yellow, black, 
anything like that, any colors you see when you're thinking of a fire, that dragon's going to absolutely love. This is probably the most common type of dragon you've seen because it's the most common type that's depicted in the media. And this one is facing south. Now, here's the thing. This dragon is not one to be taken lightly because fire can be dangerous. That's not to say that working with this dragon is dangerous, but don't go and choose it just because it looks amazing, which it absolutely does. As I said, it's the one most depicted in the media. It's the one we've grown used to throughout our lives. If you watch anything with an emphasis on fantasy, but the fire dragon is much darker than the other dragon types. It has a darker energy. It's going to force you to look more deeply into your darker sides of yourself. And there's a lot of death attached to this dragon. Some of the gifts that it enjoys are actual bones, real bones, and anything involving fire. And that tells you a lot already <laughs> with the types of gifts that it enjoys. But interestingly enough, although fire can absolutely be a source of great destruction, it's also a source of purifying and cleansing. And in this way, the fire dragon is very good for removing obstacles in your life. It's good for purifying the things that have, you know, become a little bit more unclean or imbalanced in your life. But be very mindful because, of course, it also represents destruction. One of the reasons I say be more careful with this dragon than the others and why I'm emphasizing the destruction aspect so much is because it's very easy for you to misunderstand your own intention with working with these dragons. These dragons aren't playing around. They're not going to sit here and wait for you to sift through all your mistakes and go, oh yeah, that's totally fine. I knew what you meant all along. They're going to take things at face value and run with it. So make sure before working with a fire dragon, you are a million percent sure that your intent is coming across the way you need it to. Because if it has any emphasis at all on destruction, that dragon's going to go ham with that. And if it has more to do with removing obstacles, it's going to go just as heavy into that. So make sure you understand what you're getting into. If you're using it for destruction, Instruction, make sure you're ready for what's coming your way. Gifts for this dragon are things like bloodstones, garnet, rubies. This one does happen to have a lot of crystals that match both the colors and joys and the meanings behind the crystals. It also likes cinnamon and chili. Chili is an herb you don't often see associated in witchcraft, at least not most of the time in typical everyday witchcraft, but it's something that represents that heat this dragon enjoys. Last but not least, we come to the water dragon. The water dragon faces west, and it's more for emotion magic. So I've always enjoyed letting people with mental illness who are struggling with their mental illness know about water dragons. They're going to be very good for helping you through issues like that. They'll be good at helping you understand not how to necessarily get rid of your mental illness, but how to live with it and become your highest form of self while having that mental illness struggle. They'll also be very good if you're experiencing any kind of heightened emotion. It doesn't matter whether you're extremely happy, whether you're really angry, whether you're really sad. Any heightened emotion, this dragon is going to be able to really help you with. So... If you're happy, if you're very happy, this is an emotion most people don't associate with needing help, but I'd say if you're, if you're experiencing an enormous spot of happiness, still go to your water dragon, thank it for the happiness, and maybe ask it, what can I do to continue feeling this happy emotion in my life? I don't want to get rid of it. If you're sad, talk to it about pushing through that sadness, but always remember, the water dragon is not going to just erase the negative emotions in your life. It's going to simply teach you how to persevere through them, so understand what it's going to do before seeking it out. This dragon enjoys dark blue, green, regular blue, <laughs> azurite, anything involving water, of course. It can be fresh or salt water. Don't get too hung up. 
emerald and aquamarine and as far as the water if you would like it to be a little bit more serpent like and you prefer to have salt water for yours maybe you feel that your dragon happens to enjoy salt water a little more than fresh water don't panic if you can't get near a sea just make your own salt water get some purified salt and put in a bowl of water and cleanse it it's that simple I know that I went through these a little bit quickly. It's because I wanted to give you a taste of what these dragons represent and what you can utilize their services for. But I also want you to go out and do your own research into these dragons. Take some of the key points that I let you know about in this video, like where to find them, and use that to get closer to your dragon guide. If you're not sure which dragon guide is going to suit you best, which element will suit you best, get out there and try them all out and see what happens. I hope that you learned something interesting and new in this video. And as always, do something that makes you happy today, no matter what anyone else thinks about it. And I'll see all of you again very soon.